Welcome Fly Tires to another edition of Fly Time with Monofilament. Today we're going to work on hopper legs. This is a technique that you can find in my book and most recently in Fly Tire magazine articles, but I thought I would show it to you in real time to see if there were any plot holes uh, in the tying technique that aren't evident in the photographs. Now to tie this you're going to need a monofilament, you're going to need white thread, some markers to color the white thread, and some flexible head cement. Flex cement or flex seal uh, will work just fine. Now the size of the monofilament we're going to use is going to be dependent upon the size of the leg you want to make. This leg here is, I would say, a medium hopper leg. It's about a half inch long. The size of the monofilament we want to use is going to be the, the size or thickness of monofilament we want this section of leg to be. Now this is the section between the knee and the foot. So choose a size monofilament that will look adequate for this type, this size leg. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with a single piece of monofilament in the vise. This section behind the vise jaws is our tie-in tag. You can leave this as long as you want. It's better to have too much than not enough. You can always cut off uh, the excess. Monofilament is very inexpensive. Now I've gone ahead and I've colored the long section here uh, just so it would show up on the camera better. Now this section of monofilament is going to be the center part of the leg and we can determine how long we want the thigh to the knee section. Uh, I'm going to try to make another leg to match this one so I'm going to make a mark on the monofilament at the same length as this knee. I'm using a pair of wire dykes just to crimp. I don't know if it shows up well on the camera but I can see this clearly in the vise how long I want this to be. Now the second piece of monofilament is going to be tied at a 90 degree angle to the first it's going to be tied on top. Now this section here needs to be as at least as long as this mark we've made on here for the knee. And the section towards you should be twice as long because it's going to also be the lower part of the leg and the foot. So, we're going to go ahead and put some crisscross wraps on there and add just a little touch of head cement to bind those together. Now at this point, we want to go ahead and work our thread down to our mark. You don't have to be uh, edge to edge on your wraps. We just need to progress the thread down to this position. And take the piece of monofilament that is away from you and bring it to the end to match up to your mark. Lay them side by side and wrap over. Now to make your bottom section of your leg you're going to simply pull this up and also match it to the same position and tie these together. 
as you do this work your thread back toward the vise and as you see it's going to start to bring these sections down and form your leg like so at this point you can go ahead and clip off your extra material to make the joint at the knee a little easier to, to work you can come in and flatten a little bit of your monofilament and that will help you bend that knee then just continue on wrapping your thread Now this is one thing I want to explain is the thickness of the leg is controlled by how much pressure you put on your thread wraps and how tight you put your thread. We can make this a very little skinny leg like we would need for a Katie did or we can make this a short fat little stubby leg for a cricket it all depends on the tension of your thread and you can get a lot of coverage using uh, light thread wraps and that's basically what we need your your thread is going to hold your color and we're going to go back down here to the knee and we're going to build up our thread to make this joint look like it does on a hopper. It's and once we get that a little thicker, we want to smooth our thread wraps going back up and then whip finish. At this point we want to pause and cover the thread wraps with monofilament uh, <laughs> with head cement. Okay. Now we'll give that a few minutes to dry before we continue. Okay, you can see that the little bit of dark brown marker that I used on there to uh, make the monofilament more visible is kind of bled out into the rest of the thread fibers due to the uh, flex seal that was used. Now when coloring your legs, um, you're going to want to use your light color first. In this case, I'm going to use a golden yellow on this leg here. And so you can see you can color the monofilament itself, but it's going to really cover the thread better and be more visible. So you go ahead and put on your base coat. And then, once again, we're going to put some Fleximent to seal that color in. And this will make it, when I add the darker color on top of this, you'll, they won't blend together. The Fleximent will keep the, the color separate. Also, at this point, 
you can see when I I bend this knee section it's going to leave a little point out here now you can address this in one of two ways you can simply take your scissors and clip it off or you can take a lighter and simply send it back a little bit now while this coat is drying we can go ahead and make the bends in our, our rest of our leg and to do this we're going to use a bodkin or as I have here a needle and a bamboo skewer and we're going to use a, a lighter just to warm it up and by bending the monofilament over the heated needle it puts a permanent kink in it and depending on how you want this leg to set you can close this joint uh, a lot snugger than this or you can leave it open now the second bend in the leg is going to be at the ankle joint and that primarily on most hoppers is going to be equal to the bottom of the femur or the hip joint so that's going to be a bend in this area here so once again uh, we're going to heat the needle now when you when you're heating these needles uh, you can burn through the monofilament so it's always best until you get used to how long the needle will hold the heat it's it's always good to practice on a piece of scrap monofilament and what I did initially and what I still do now is I'll count one one thousand two one thousand and then try uh, test that against the monofilament uh, different size needles hold heat longer or less so you'll have to experiment uh, with your botkin or your whatever needles you use until you get a sense of what's going to bend it well and what's too far now you don't want to burn through this uh, once you've done all this work on a fly uh, to burn the leg off so make sure and experiment before you go to it so we're going to go ahead and put this secondary bend here where the foot would be the ankle and then for the the foot part I like to flatten from this perspective the underneath and then clip a little bit now clipping it with the wire dikes will make a little bit of a foot whereas uh, clipping it with your with the old pair of scissors will leave you a clean cut so that's just personal preference there now you can make sure that that color is brought down Now you're going to want to cover this with flex seal or this color will eventually just wash off the monofilament. So go ahead and add a little bit of this here. And since we're going to take a, a little break to let that dry, let's go ahead and repaint this and we'll let this one dry as well. And once this dries we can come back and add another color and your leg will be complete ready to tie on to any fly you choose to put it on okay now that the flex seal or fleximin is dry we can go ahead and add on the accent color which is going to be in this case a darker color and I like to look at a 
online photograph of an insect that I'm trying to duplicate and try to get as close as I can to the actual color and pattern of colors on the, the actual insect itself. So there you go. That's a monofilament and thread hopper leg. Um, I hope you can tie some and add them to your patterns. I think it'll help you out on the water as well as uh, give you some more fun time at the vise. Thanks again.